So um, this is the Dumbbells, the personal fitness podcast where we, I'm Eugene Cordero. And me, I'm Ryan Stanger, have discussions and answer questions on all things health and fitness. This is solely based on our own working experience, a little bit of bro science. So please keep in mind, we're not doctors, never claim to be. Mm -mm, just a couple of dumbbells, love ourselves from fitness, want to help you with yours. And the help can start right now. Now it can. And now it can happen live. And we're really trying to do this. We're like... We have become the most tech savvy we ever have we've ever been, buddy. Totally. Except for I had your audio going this whole time. I've got to. That's OK. I, I, I don't think I could really I could get it. Yeah. Wasn't too bad. All right. Well, that'll this will solve it now. Yeah. I mean, you sound good to me, bud. <laughs> you sound great. You sound great. Here we are. Here we are. Um, we are live. It's it's funny, even with more time it feels like we have to like do this um we've run out of I, I, like we haven't been able to do i like we're hurried and we're, you know. <laughs> yeah i think it's because we're just so stressed out about the whole like i don't even know right, I don't, who knows I, 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 who knows it's, it's too much time yeah but um yeah. here we go uh i think it's also because we are we are adding the element of um the live, the live broadcast stuff. the live broadcast yeah um, so I just went live on um, Instagram as well. Okay. Um, over here. And then I'm going live on YouTube right here. So then we're over on Instagram over here. We're on YouTube over here. And um, yeah. Um, so we, we're doing like double double duty. Okay. Um, so I'll be looking here for Instagram. What's up, everybody? Cool. And then I'm going to look over here for YouTube. Um, so we're going YouTube, we're going Instagram. Um, what I would totally love is uh, for Stanger to join me on um, on Instagram. Oh, here it goes. Um, so um, Stanger should join me on Instagram and then in like about 15 minutes, um, yeah. we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have, whoops. We're gonna have um, Tony join us on um tony's gonna join us on youtube so um Stang, you might want to turn off your sound on your phone so that you know we don't see you over there i got the uh hmm, i don't know earpiece in yeah well <laughs> still um i got multiple earpieces going yeah well i could still kind of hear you through your but i figured it out Here's the crazy thing. Your phone um, service is horrible because I, you're pixelated here. YouTube, you look great. Zoom, me, Zoom meeting, you look awesome. So the- um, You look a little pixelated on mine. I, I look clear in mine, you look pixelated. Oh, Zoom looks good for both. Zoom, yeah, Zoom, Zoom looks good for both, except for my hair still with the little <laughs> faux hawk going. So you're seeing a little of the faux. I, I like Oh it. shit, dude, it's a full on faux hawk. Yeah, dude, I I'm in, I'm into it. I'm into it. Um, I'll probably throw a hat on in a hot minute, but in the meantime, uh, I'm pretty into it. Um, so uh, yeah, here we are. Um, what I really would love for all the bell babies out there to help out a little bit is if you're on Instagram Live with us. Awesome. I hope you can hear us. Okay. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you can hear us or type in in the comments. You can hear us okay. Um, and uh, also try to go over to YouTube um, and uh, see if you're seeing this episode live over here because um, that would be awesome. You don't need an account, I don't think. You do if you want to comment um, on YouTube, but... Um, but uh, the reason that we want that to happen is so that uh, when we get Tony on, um, that uh, you guys can interact with all of us um, on YouTube and everything. Right. We're do we're going to make the switch over there because it'll allow you to see and interact with our guest is why we're right. doing it. Yeah, exactly. So our YouTube, that's what people are asking. I think it's, is it at the dumbbells? Is I it just so. the dumbbells? Should I just do. be the dumbbells. I believe that is exactly what's happening. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, Oz Ten Hansen, Austin Hansen, check it out, man. See if we are the dumbbells. <laughs> 
why don't you yeah, do a we, little detective work for us and let us know be. if we are the de- we should be yeah we should be babe we should be babe we should be babe it, babe listen babe you got a couple of uh guys that are are figuring shit out yeah. oh shit i lost you oh you're back you're back no you lost me you're for a second back. because i can't get rid of uh your audio on my phone um like i hear you echoed in my phone somehow and i don't know how to figure that out but um i think i have to mute my actual phone somehow so that's why i'm coming in and out watch this um but here on youtube you can still see me so you can look at me over here completely now yeah not on youtube baby i'm still on with everybody yeah 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 you're still on with everybody i'm i'm trying to technical stuff happening it's not really technical i don't know what it is now you're back no i'm gonna be gone again uh, it's not so much as a uh, tech. Can you hear me, dude? Di- different difficulties. Hey, look, is. this is uh, you guys are seeing. This is behind the scenes. This is what happens. This is the reality of it. We're, yeah. we're, uh, we're figuring it out. Well, the thing is, is um, Stanger's plugged into his phone. So that's what he's hearing. I'm plugged into the YouTube live situation. So that's what I'm actually hearing. So I can still see and hear Stanger through the zoom meeting this is all stuff that who cares who cares nobody cares about what's happening behind the Are, curtain because it's the same thing that's happening behind the curtain for you guys is the mic is the mic picking up your earphone this other earbud no my mic uh, no. no 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 there's there's multiple things that are happening right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to think of where my sound is coming from are you plugged into your phone I'm plugged into my phone. Yeah. So you, the sound that. No, but I'm staying on your end where your mic is picking that up. Oh, um, I don't think. Um, um, <laughs> I don't think it matters. So um, <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> well, here's the thing that's going on. I wanted you to plug into your computer because eventually we're going to be just on our computer. So. I mean, eventually... I got my computer one too. If you want, you want me to use yeah. that one? Yeah, but I mean, your headphones are gonna have to go over there eventually. I got them here. I got another set. Oh, you you're doubling up your set of headphones. I see what you're doing. Yeah. You want me these yeah. ones out? No, I don't want that out. Those ones are out. I see what you're doing now. Oh, so you sh- got shit. I have to use these ones so people can hear me though, right? Because this is where my mic is. Well, no. Your yeah. mic is here. Your mic is into the Zoom meeting. I know, but the people on the IG live. No, they, they can, can just hear you. Me through my... No, they're just hearing you through your phone, like out loud. Oh, so I can just turn the volume down on my phone. Sure. That makes sense. It, um, Stand by. <laughs> um, everybody's asking if uh, Stanger can wipe off the la- the thin layer of mayonnaise that's on his computer. His, his uh, lens uh, that's causing the real problem over here. Is it really? Yeah. I don't have that on mine. Do, no. are, is it? Is that how people are seeing it? Like, yeah, everybody the, looks like you look like you're going through a little bit of mayo, bro. In the um, in my image, it looks normal. Yeah, yeah, that's how you see yourself. You see yourself <laughs> in a thin layer of mayo, anyway. So I think mayo probably, looks uh, good. Mayo does look good. I mean, once it's thin enough, it looks great. Ooh, that's not mayonnaise, somebody's saying. Well, that could be true, too. Shit, how do I mute this? Ooh, did, did somebody just add the link to our uh, YouTube account? Um, uh, to our live stream, that would be awesome. There's like a lot of uh, fidgeting around. Stanger, you got to look over to the Zoom camera every once in a while just so that people can see your face if they're looking at that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, YouTube's mail free, YouTube's mail free, YouTube's mail free. Hold on. Yeah. So YouTube looks good according to people. Um, if you're on our Instagram, um, here's how, uh, how am I going to do this? Maybe on our Instagram, I'll, I'll, um, I'll put on the link to uh to the youtube page or i can tell you what it is it's 
capital F Z C. Um, no, that's not going to work. Let's just put the link on there when yeah, we uh, we'll figure it out. We'll we'll I leave did this wear a wig we'll for just... the Mandalorian, by the way. Yeah, it wasn't this hair. Um, I had a full Jedi wig on, man with a braid. Um, people were asking. One person was asking, and I wanted to answer right away because that's how I am. Um, but yes, so here we are. Um, we're we're gonna post the the link to YouTube in a in a hot minute. Um, so that you guys can, uh, to, to join us. Uh, can you maybe pin it? I can, I can try to pin it in our, um, on, uh, YouTube, right? How do I do that? Nope. Um, let's see. I don't know how to do this, bro. Uh, post, can we, we can post the link to our, um, on our bio. Yeah. So yeah. that people can just click on it. I love that idea. I uh, just got to figure out how to do it. Hey, look at this. There's um, there's people uh, chatting with us already on the YouTube live one. Uh, Morgan, we got Stacy. Uh, we've got Austin. People are saying uh, we got Sophie. Uh, people are saying that we're a lot clearer on um, on YouTube live. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, Mayo so, free. Uh, it's Mayo free over there. So um, we're gonna probably log out of this Instagram live now. We're gonna we're gonna um, get Tony on in like five minutes. So um, if you have any questions for Tony uh, Cavallaro, uh, Tony Cavallaro, you know him from know Righteous him. Gemstones. Yeah, he's from uh, from uh, what's that one on Nickelodeon? School, School of, Rock. of Rock on Nickelodeon. He's a School of Rock on Nickelodeon. Um, he's a Groundling. Groundlings dude, so funny. Yeah, Fucking. super funny and a fit dude, like in shape, fit dude, totally, wild man, totally in shape, totally fit, and um, and he's been knocking out some workouts um, uh, on the East Coast during this. So. Um, so yeah, um, so we're gonna log out of Instagram now, so we can go straight to our YouTube live um, meeting with Tony. Um, again, ask the the questions on YouTube. You don't have to have an account, I don't think. Um, oh, but you might have to for comments. But um, uh, we're gonna be over there. Um, so if you have questions for him, go ahead and throw those questions on. So we're signing out of this uh, on Instagram, and we'll see you soon. still here on youtube youtube still happening the tube's still happening tube still happening let me see if i can pin this to our or uh add this yeah. to our ig yeah you think you can do the math a little bit there um <laughs> things it's unclear um so uh also the youtube is um the youtube what am i at 80 year old man the youtube the youtube is like um is like 20 seconds uh, behind. Send so, me a uh, huge, send me the link to this meeting right now. Oh, not to the meeting where I'm going to send you the link to the YouTube, to the YouTube. Yeah. Because send if I send you, YouTube. if I send you a link to the meeting, then um, I guess people could hop onto the meeting, but I fuck uh, it. Hey, who gives the hey, fuck? Who fucking gives a flying? Who gives a, who gives a, who gives hey, a, who gives a, who gives a, um, but here we are. I, I'll actually try to do it since I have them both, uh, on my joint. You know what I'm saying? But do um, like a, do a post with Caval that Cavalero is going to be on there and then say link in bio and then put the link to the YouTube thing in the bio. Listen to this. All of a sudden, this guy's a pro. Can I, you I was going to do it. I I don't even know if you, if we know if we can figure out how to do it, but I'm, I'm going to try. We're going to try right now and we're going to do it. But uh, uh, Stagger, can you go to the YouTube account on your phone just so you can see it live and check up on some of the comments yeah. and stuff that people have yeah. in the meantime, how are you doing, man? Like as we're, as we're checking in here, everything's great. Uh, let's see home the dumbbells. Yeah, that's us. Yeah, with um, Tony Caballero. This is happening live. Yeah. Oh, are you posting it now? Is What's that what that? you're doing? No, no, no. I was just going to the I was just pulling up the live chat now. 
yeah, somebody said that they're going to try to zoom bomb us, but I don't think it's going to happen, baby. Um, I think you need a password for this meeting. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> let's let's hope so. We'll risk um, the zoom the zoom bomb. Yeah, yeah, we should. Um, so uh, here we go. I can do. I wonder if I can figure that out. Um, anyways, um, so wait, what's going on with you, Stangs? Uh, dude, everything is great. Uh, I am, um, you know, doing the doing the routine, man. We're over a month in it. Uh, yeah, everything's going okay. I mean, all things considered, it could be worse. We're real, we're real fortunate, you know, lucky. I was telling you earlier about school stuff with Stone. Yeah. Um, so we have through LA Unified this Google Classroom thing that started now. And uh, that's been interesting, just adding that on a little bit more curriculum to what he's doing. Sure. Um, and they do it all, you know, they get the assignment with some instructions. They do it, the assignment online through like a portal, and then they're able to immediately turn it into the teacher who can grade it and give feedback. And then they also have office hours, you know, online that you can schedule with the teacher. Right. And then they do a once a week check-in, which he's in third grade. I think that's about all they can do for a whole class. It's a half hour. I mean, it's a lot going on with all these kids in like a giant Zoom meeting. I don't and what's the, what, yeah, what's the kind of like um, curriculum that you are trying to do at home? It seems like they, so what I had been doing before this was just a lot of review shit and I was having him read books and, you know, write little reports on the books he's reading or, uh -huh. you know, I think at this age, you're trying to get them to, uh, to interface with the material. What do you think about it? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think this means as opposed to just summaries of it? Yeah, um, it forced them to kind of engage a little bit and have an opinion and then back up that opinion. So I would have him do his silent reading and then whatever book he's been reading, uh, you know, come up with a little assignment for that where they write like a paragraph with an introductory sentence, the details and a conclusion. Right. Um, and then the, that's basically what their curriculum is for third grade for kind of reading and writing that comprehension. And then math, they're doing a perimeter, some basic geometry stuff. And so now that the um, now that the, we have like the Google Classroom thing going, he's kind yeah. of, you know, doing that in more of a structured environment. So it's been good. That's good. I have all this fucking work saved. Like I've been a little taskmaster, taskmaster on him and doing that shit. You know, you can't at this age, they can kind of commit to like an hour or two uh, throughout the entire day broken up a little bit. And then you got to like embed like little breaks from there and activity and outside stuff and yeah. exercise and all that shit and art. And, you know, so <laughs> who knows? I don't know. I'm probably doing irreparable damage to him. I'm probably well, doing irreparable damage. I mean, come on. I mean, you, we're expecting people to basically become multitaskers in various ways. I mean, it's bananas. Yeah, right? that and I, you know, and just not, I don't know. I mean, giving them, I, like I was telling, I, I've been saying it since this whole thing started, like the key has been structure. Like we just make up his day. And then I tell him, you got this till this time, that till that. And he checks the clock. He kind of like, they kind of crave it, you know? And yeah. then, and then if you slide a little bit, you could be like, you know what? It's a nice day. You did a lot of math already. You can have a little more outdoor time. Then it's like, oh, look great. at you. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, that's good. We do a walk every morning. Great. Yeah. Do that kind of get up, make your bed, brush your hair, brush your teeth, take a big old walk. And then we start to talk about what we're going to do that day and then go over. I like doing it too. It's, it's kind of like an, it's a, it's been a nice little uh, routine, you know, cause I, I structure is good for me too, you know? Sure. Sure. I mean, are you, are you working out at the same time every day? No, 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 no. No, because I haven't been that inspired. I mean, I, I haven't missed a day. I've been banging the workouts uh, out, but yeah. um, they're all it's all over the map. You know, wh when I can fit it in kind of based on what he's doing. Yeah, um, I definitely will. Once I'm doing the workout, like I'll do it to completion. I don't do like little pieces and spread it out. I've got to get it, you know, because it, like we were talking about earlier, so limited on what you can do. Sure. I want to make sure that I'm 
you know, getting that kind of pre fatigue or uh, oxygen deprivation or whatever I'm trying to achieve. I want to make sure I accomplish that. Yeah. I don't have enough stuff to kind of piecemeal something together over the day. I need to, you know, part of what I'm doing is the, the cadence of it and the, uh, the specific rep range and rest got time it. and all that kind of shit. Ooh. Well, we got Tony joining us now. And also I did put the link up on our, um, on our bio of, um, of uh, Instagram. So, um, Stanger, if you want to go ahead and create a post and say link in our bio, we're okay. good. Let's and, do it. and then we got, um, Tony joining us now. I think his audio is coming on. Ooh, look at that. What's up, dude? Baby boy is outside. Baby boy is hanging outside. That's how cool he is. <laughs> oh, shit. Fucking what yes. What a treat. Do you want sideways? We want, we want, as, uh, however, we can see how thick you are right now, man, because we're all okay, quarantined. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, does that baby. work better for you yeah. guys? Yeah, that's great. That's great, dude. We got to, we got to get the full Jungle Boy showcase, man. Yeah, yeah. Dude. Tony Jungle Boy Cavallero up in this motherfucker. We got Jungle Boy. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> what are you talking Hold about? On. Well, I'm you Jungle Boy. I don't know. Oh, I yeah. I mean, I, I guess in a certain way, it, it comes off a little. I like the hair. I like the hair, you know, just more like the Tarzan hair, you know? Oh, it looks, got it. Got it looks it. dope. Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. there we go. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Tarzan. Hold on, guys. Hold on a second. This isn't working. I've got to, I've got to do it this way for a bit. That's fine. Totally yeah. fine. I can totally go fine. grab. I can go grab the other thing. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. Wait. So where are you, dude? Oh, we lost him. Oh, oh no. there you go. Right. Home. You're at home. And home is home. home is where. Home is where the heart is. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Am I freezing out more? You um, guys are frozen. Every once in a while, you're freezing out, but not. Not terribly. Well, now you are terribly. Now okay, we don't see, see you, but we can hear you. We can hear. We you. can hear you still. <laughs> and we should say we are live right now on YouTube, just so yeah. you know. Which Full I disclosure. Love, dude, which I love. Oh, okay. Yeah. I feel like we're back. Yes. We're back. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Um, we're, we're back. back we're it. in it. Yeah. But <sighs> guys, the heart I was just the... mopping. Was that your workout? Yeah, that's why I'm sweating. <laughs> your mop workout dude mop uh, workout we've been so we've been wanting you to come on while we can all hang out in the same room and this is crazy that now we have you but you're across the country i know we're gonna we're gonna do it though we're gonna do it where we're all together and maybe yeah. have you guys ever done one of these where you work out when you do it not yet, but I would I'd be totally down to do. We're it. totally down. Well, actually, since this this uh, quarantine uh, self isolation, we have um, we've kind of been experimenting with doing the live episodes. We haven't done anything live, and we haven't done anything with the visual component. So yeah. now that we have we we have that, and we're doing that, it'll probably happen. Well, I'm just so curious because you've been posting on your Instagram some of the workouts that you've been doing. Now, yeah, do you dude. have a full setup at home or do you only have like? A, no, you know? so I've got resistance bands and uh, an ab like wheel uh -huh. and dumb and dumbbells. That's it. Are they adjustable dumbbells or are they just like a set? No, I've got a 25 set and a 30 set. Got it. Which is still, I mean, you plow through. That's a, what, perfect. Perfect. That's all I need. And what kind of stuff are you programming your own stuff? Or are you going off of like something that you're finding online? I, yeah, I do a little bit of everything. Kind of my like my top three guys that I kind of uh, I nab all my well four my top four guys that I nab workouts from online are uh, B J Gador, former editor at Men's Health. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Scott Fitness, another Men's Health guy who yes, is an yeah. awesome. Yeah, he's yeah. rad. I definitely follow um, him on Instagram, and and yeah. And yeah, he's stuff got great dumbbell workouts. Yeah. Um, this guy, Paul Scalar, who's up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And then uh, Ebenezer Samuels, who's uh, who's the like current men's health, I think, editor in chief. I'm actually going to do a live workout with him on Friday on men's health. Oh, really? And that's the guy who one night he fell asleep and then he got visited by all of his ghosts and stuff. 
and that's he changed true. his whole now life. Now he's a workout guru. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he used to be like a miserable piece of shit. And then all of a sudden, yeah. Well, fun fact, he's the guy that uh, revolutionized the fitness industry by using chains. Wait, really? No, oh, wow. but you know wow. the guy. He I know. The, it, yeah. you but know he I do. The chains I do like the idea of of like <laughs> the rock workouts where he's just like, it's like, no, man, just get another 45 pound plate. Yeah, well, animal. I yeah, I like anything that makes me feel a little bit like an animal. I also <laughs> like resistance bands because the tension's constant. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it increases as you uh as you max that bitch out you know exactly, so we're not used dude. we're not used to that i i've been i've been enjoying that i i kind of play around with bands not regularly in my kind of gym workout but since i've been home obviously they've been coming in so it's been nice it's been a different uh a different kind of resistance good feeling yeah so you- looking for the silver lining somewhere in the- well ryan shoot me a message and i'll i'll send you some good band workouts yeah, I love it. I'll we'll uh, I'll I'll shoot you a message and then we'll post them. You know, we'll post what we're doing. Is your yes. workout uh, on Friday gonna be on your Instagram or it's gonna be on? Uh, is it is it one of those like meeting ones? So it'll be on it's both. It's gonna of be yours. Men's Health Instagram. He's gonna go live and then I'm gonna join him on his live. Oh, very cool. Cool. Do you know what kind of workout you guys are gonna be focused in on? I think it's gonna be a full body hit. Uh huh. Thing. But he's kind of great. I've done his lower body workouts the last two weeks. Smoke show. Yeah. <laughs> Smoked. Um, our, so uh, we are getting a, one question that somebody's asking us on live on YouTube right now is um, how do we transit? Because our days are kind of structured based on us. How do you yeah. transition from work day or hangout day or whatever the fuck the day is to work out time like do you is it the same time you're working out every day or is are you, do you have to like when you wake up in the morning kind of you know structure it in i mean the the way that it is for me is i'm like i gotta get it in once the my little dude takes a nap is when i usually do it so like i know i'm gonna work out around one for myself okay. and if it happens before that fine, but I kind of have to put it in my schedule of the day. But I know there's a lot of people who, you know, are focused in on trying to still have a work day. So then come five o'clock maybe, or doing it first thing in the morning, but somebody who has a little bit less of a structure, I'm curious of how you transition mentally to get over there. Are, are yeah. you, what about you, Ryan? Uh, well, we were just, um, we were just talking about that. I, um, tricky you know because i have a kid uh who's in third grade so i'm doing i'm running a lot of his school stuff my wife's got a more normal job and so she has uh she's working remote from home but she has a full day's work commitment whereas i'm just kind of like acting in podcasts so i can whatever the fuck i can't pretend like i have any shit i gotta do on any kind of structure (laughs) so i've been running his school stuff for better or for worse and so I kind of have to be there for that. Um, you know, we, we tend to knock out the more challenging stuff early, but you have to break it up a little bit because he's a third grader. So I've been telling, I was telling Eugene, like I've been a little bit catch as catch can with my workouts. I've been really consistent in, in doing them every day, but it's when, I, you know, and also I've been a touch bored just because of the, this, the same scenery. And so it's been, I haven't been inspired to like, oh, I can't fucking wait to get up and do some body weight squats again, you know? So, uh, yeah. but I, yeah, I've been, I've been fitting them in, but it's like, sometimes it'll creep into the evening a little bit more than I like to. Whereas before when I had access to a gym, I'd work out early. Like I liked getting it done early, you know? Yeah. So no, way. no great answer. Just kind of just fitting it in. And then the day will, you know, the sun starts to go down. And I'm like, Oh, old man Stanger. <laughs> <laughs> gotta open the bag of tricks and get the uh, fucking kettlebell out and uh, do some uh, bands and you know what are we gonna do? Yeah. So uh, you got a kettlebell at home? That's good. Yeah, dude. I got I I have an I got an eighty pounder. <laughs> I got dude, a couple. Yeah. You can do all kinds of stuff. I know. With that I stuff. know. Yeah. Yes, it's been it's been a real save grace that eighty pounder just especially for like lower body legs just just having some weight around to move 
has been great. And then I like I'll load it up with bands too. So you know you stand on the bands and then you run it through the handle and then you can add a little band tension to it, which has been nice. Dude, loving the bands. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you follow those four guys on Instagram and just scroll through their stuff, you won't get bored. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. What so okay, so Tony, Wait. why don't you walk us through what a day looks like for you right yeah. now? We'll let some more questions roll in for Tony and then we'll do we'll work backwards. We'll we'll have you kind of take us through your fitness origin, you know, where you grew up playing sports and that kind of stuff. And then we'll yeah. finish the show and see if we can bang out some questions that people have asked while we're talking about this stuff. Yeah. I but love like, it. I love it. yeah. So what's your, what's your day uh, like right now? And, and when do you fit it in? So I've always been an early riser, not as early as usual right now. Cause I'm giving myself a break, but I'm usually up at seven 30 feeding the dogs, listen to the daily podcast, New York times. And then I, take a little pre-workout, jump right into my shred. And then usually that'll consist of 10 minutes of abs and then a 25 minute hit. And then I'll focus either shoulders, chest, back and biceps or legs. Okay. And then after that, I've been, I've got like four books um, that I'm reading <laughs> and I'll jump on the Peloton and I'll just do, just ride. And so I've been burning like another 350, 400 calories just reading. Wow. That's great. And then after that, I set the timer on my phone. I put it in, in flight mode for like an hour and a half, two hours. And I'm just going to sit down and either stare at the computer or write something. Okay. Um, and then great. trying to do stuff like this, like either, you know, a character thing that a friend's doing online or... Yeah a podcast or, and then usually wife and I take the dogs for a walk for an hour and a half and then dinner and bed. Yeah. So you, you bang out most of your physical stuff really right at the start of the day, just so that you're energized for the day to feel like something, right? Exactly. And if I yeah. was back home, I, I would wake up, go in the hot tub at one Oh six for 10 minutes go in the cold plunge at 35 degrees for three minutes and then do my workout. Oh, that's oh, that, awesome, man. That's in LA. Yeah. Oh, wow. What kind of, do you have a cold bl plunge built into your ground or do you have like one of those above ground Lazarus pool ones? I bought, I bought a chest freezer at Best Buy for 300 bucks. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, my buddy and I sealed it with silicone and we fill it up like three quarters of the way. And then you put it on a timer. You let it cool up for a day. It gets, and then I bought one of those little temperature like laser thermometers. Keep it between 50 and 35, which is usually turning it on the timer for like two and a half hours a day. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's amazing. Funny. That's I'm so jealous. I'm gonna, yeah, that's, that's genius, dude. And you do that so every working, morning that you were in uh, LA. Yeah, every morning. It's like so euphoric, guys. Yeah, it's rocket fuel. Are, yeah, I mean, you're just like ready for, <laughs> for the day. <laughs> Wow. Well, yeah, I've been, I like, it's been, it's been an ongoing thing here. How obsessed I am with sauna stuff. Like I, I was, a, I would do the sauna like every day. I was really close right before all this fucking bullshit happened to putting one in at my house. And like, I'm so, I was telling Eugene, like, I've never been, I've never been more disappointed with myself that I didn't fucking pull the trigger on it. Never yeah. in my entire life. I've nothing been I've more, ever done. I've nothing, been a lot. No I've sports been, failure, I've been very, no nothing. What? I've been very disappointed in Ryan for a number of reasons. <laughs> Other than that, but this is one of the big ones for me. Dude, I'm fucking fur nobody can be more furious at themselves than I am sure. about not putting a sauna in. Furious. They'll put one in right now, bro. I'm not kidding. Two weeks ago, I got a call from Sun Lighten, and they're like, "Hey, just following up on the email you sent about your ingest with the sauna." <laughs> I mean, I'm like, sure they're looking for work, right? Like people. <laughs> yeah, are I'm like, guys, I haven't gotten a paycheck in 2020. Please. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that was, that's been the issue is the uh, I want to see what the financial ruin looks like after all the. Fucking oh, my dust God. So, yeah, yeah definitely not looking at any kind of luxury shit like that. But I I had this guy I trained and I helped kind of design his home gym setup. 
and I, I convinced him to do a sauna and a cold plunge and the cold plunge. I mean, this guy's a crazy, you know, wealthy guy. And like the, the cold plunge we put in was like, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, but it's in the ground, you know, with like a timer and it goes, he's a super tall guy. It goes up to his neck. It's fucking amazing. It's going to be, I'll be able to use it, you know, just sure through him. And I'm, I'm super excited for it. It's like uh, it's like being like a shopper for like some wealthy weirdo, oh, you know, where you just get to dude, pick out all their so stuff. Jealous. Of yeah. That. Yeah. But still being able to like, you know, um, make a a Best Buy like box freezer into a dude, plunge. That's, that's, that's so such smart. a hack. What a great yeah. hack. Did you just see Googled somebody it. else do that or did you come up with the idea? Just Googled it. So, oh, cool. So. When I worked on Gemstones last year, we went to this kick-ass gym here in Charleston, CD Fit. Adam and I, and and basically all the guys from from the the show, they all work out at this place, CD Fit. John and the owner, Goodman, Carl, yeah. it happens to be right next to one of those drive-through ice places. Oh, cool! So we just go over there, buy two hundred pounds of ice, put it in the tub that he had there, fill it up, and we did it after basically every workout. So I oh, got wow. totally addicted yeah. to it yeah 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 it's invigorating uh okay so you, wait so you're I, home because i want to hear about and... i want to hear about gemstones and how you ended up there and all this but let's go, should we go back huge yeah 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 let's go back to um um yeah where you grew up and uh sports wise where what was what's your what's your background as far as athletics so i grew up in annadale virginia which is a little suburb of dc it's like 10 minutes outside of DC and uh, I was a super fat kid. So first I did, I did uh, my mom enrolled my brother and I in dance when we were like five years old and we did that for like four years. So that all, although it was very funny to see a chubby child dance, I feel like it was such a great foundation, uh, coordination, sure. discipline, all of that stuff. And then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out and my <laughs> You know, we were, you know, lower middle class. So my mom was like, my mom and dad were like, okay, you can either dance or you can do karate. Sure. And so I had to leave dance behind me for the time being. And (laughs) I did, I did karate. I did karate for like 12 years. I did uh, uh, American style and then Korean style Taekwondo, Olympic style Taekwondo for like 12 years. Wow. Black belt. Yep. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. all the way through my older brother is a second degree and i ended up getting first degree black belt we did that at power kicks karate you uh, big best still... of the best fan oh dude huge best of the best fan <laughs> nice yeah. cynthia Got a rothrock, best of the best. dude what's that do you guys know who cynthia rothrock is oh yeah of course are you crazy <laughs> <laughs> she did all those b karate movies in the late 80s yeah. early 90s and yeah. she was famous she, she only got a... like one that was <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, no. She I want to hear this it. kick, dude. She would do this axe kick. Guys would grab her from behind and she would do a kick. Oh, right. And to the the back. guy's head would yes. be here and she would kick, yeah. kick him here. Kick him behind. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, dude. Cynthia Rothrock. I got to meet her and I got to meet the guys that were in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle suits. Oh, oh really? Nice. Yeah, it was um, it was Larry Lamb. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sweet. Ho Young Pack. Of course. Ho Sung Pack. Uh-huh. Uh, and I can't remember the last guy, but they well, would come and do like demonstrations. I remember uh, w- one of the guys in one of the suits for one of the movies was Ernie Reyes Jr., who uh, later yeah. became he, he became the pizza delivery guy in the second movie. Yeah, yeah. he was Keno. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's but, also in uh, he's also in uh, and side Sonia. Yeah, but he's yeah. also in a uh, fucking uh, the la- or the the surf uh, ninjas, dude. Surf yeah, surf ninjas. Yeah, surf ninjas, and also uh, fucking red Sonia. Yeah, that's yeah, red Sonia. And, oh, yeah, dude, he's, like... he's also uh, he, he's also in uh, wasn't was he? In, he was in a TV show way early on. Sidekicks. It was called Sidekicks, where he was like a adopted kid to a yep. cop, yep. and then he would go on, he would go on fucking like he would go on the beat with the dude and like beat up a bunch of like bad guys bad guys and it's just like yeah. you can't do that you can't bring a child to that you shitty shitty policeman he's also, he also in the had... last dragon right yes yeah. um yeah oh, i don't remember that is he yeah with bruce leroy 
Yeah, 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 he is. <laughs> yeah, he's he? he's at he's he trains at the same dojo. Yeah. Yeah. And he was he, he was using he had a, a killer fight scene in the rundown with the rock. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck. He's awesome. So yeah, all, I my buddies, all my buddies from the karate days in Virginia, mm-hmm. there's like three of them that all are out here now or out in LA now that are like super successful stunt guys. Oh wow, wow. that's cool. Yeah. And they're all like best buds with Ernie Reyes. Cool. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so I do Taekwondo all through middle school. And then like my freshman year in high school, my brother, as soon as he got to high school, I think his sophomore year, he stopped doing Taekwondo completely. And then he did football, winter track and lacrosse. And so when I got to high school, I did football, wrestling and lacrosse. So so were you a so when you were a young, young kid, you were chubby. But by yeah. the time you got into martial arts and Taekwondo, you started thinning out because you no, were doing dude, it so much or you were just a, you were a thick fr- kid doing karate. Yeah. 210 yeah. your yeah. freshman year? Yeah, freshman year in high school, 210 center yeah. on the football team. Oh, wow. center. Uh what uh, were you doing any kind of uh uh calisthenics or weights or anything while you're doing karate or were you just basically doing the, the whatever the class was? Yeah, whatever the class was. We would do like sprint training and stuff and I would try really hard with that but you know my diet was shit yeah right you, you were going ninja turtle style so you were going dude, pizza and pizza and, yeah i mean dude the, the story my wife loves to hear is so um i i wanted to lose weight in like seventh grade and so uh <laughs> so i i had like i got like kashi cereal and i had the cereal i had a couple bowls of kashi cereal <laughs> and then uh my mom's partner at the time like busted me in the kitchen drinking one of my mom's slim fasts and she's like why are you drinking a slim fast and i'm like because i want to lose the weight and she's like you can't have two bowls of cereal and drink drink the slim fast yeah Yeah. that doesn't work that way doesn't work that way it's it's a shake in the morning shake in the afternoon yeah yeah Yeah. i was just a hungry kid Um, what 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 was your mom's did your mom cook a lot or was she just working and hustling and no they were always working and hustling that's the that was the deal she worked at a bar she was a bartender for most of my middle school high school career so it'd be like we would show up for like our our lunch would be a a cold philly cheesesteak from the night before right that's hardcore yeah 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 just do yeah doing the eating out and that kind of thing and whatever yeah it's tough, man. If that's, you know, if that's your kind of foundation for nutrition and then you're already kind of a little heavy going into it, it's like a recipe for, uh, yeah, for being a fat kid, you know? So are you and your brother both, uh, pretty heavy guys, even though you guys are playing all these sports in high school then? He was not, he was, uh, pretty slim and trim, but I mean, he was like, he was one of those guys. And I don't know if either of you guys played football, but like, he was one of those guys where like the switch was turned off, like the, I can hit anyone. I can run as fast as I can at this man and, and hit him. And I don't care what happened. There's no register of like what happens. Like, yeah, he was one of those guys. For me, it was like, I tried to be one of those guys, but like yeah. that first stinger, like my sophomore year, the first time I saw stars, I was like, ah, uh, I don't really like this yeah. feeling that didn't shy me away too much from hitting. Cause then when I hit on the lacrosse field, I was like, you know, it was hard to out hit me because it was a different yeah. game, but mm-hmm. football, man, like I ended up being a middle linebacker my senior year and, you know, going up against these like, you know, blue chip, you know, running backs. Yeah. I mean, I just aim for the legs, man, and try and, wow. you know, single leg take down these guys and not so, have to go head to head with them. Then, so then did finding, um, finding, um, lacrosse did that become more of your sport then through yeah through high school so so i had actually picked up a stick my brother was on the state championship team his sophomore year so i was in seventh grade and that kind of turned me on to that that was really cool to watch that and so um i played uh in in middle school and then i got into high school and i was really lucky i got to play varsity with my brother he was a senior i was a freshman Wow, very uh, my, cool. Yeah, my freshman year in high school. And actually, I did winter track that year. It wasn't until my sophomore year that I wrestled, and that's when I lost all the weight, and I wrestled 171. 
That'll do it. Wait, so you were yeah. at 210 and you lost 40 pounds by yep. your sophomore year. Now, yep. did you did you spike up in the height also or were, were you just... I don't remember spiking up in the height because I've all, I feel like I've always been pretty consistently like five, eight, like, yeah, I feel like if you were to look at any program, I'd still be like pretty much the same height. I mean, as soon as you started to wrestle, I mean, it just, it flies off of you and then you have to maintain that. And luckily, like I was, I stayed in that like 175 to 183 range mm -hmm. throughout the rest of my high school career and that was that because you were trying to stay focused on that wrestling weight Be, was it like um was it sport specific yeah i think so i mean i just my friends that would cut weight they were miserable and yeah. i guess like i was just like i didn't want to wrestle 160 and have to cut weight like i was like i was i ended up going to the state tournament my senior year and i remember like weighing in for the state tournament in virginia and they're like the biggest wrestling state in the country and like i remember weighing in and these guys were like fitness models at weigh-ins yeah and right. and i'm feeling like i'm the fattest guy in the 171 pound weight class i'm the biggest <laughs> pud here um but it didn't matter because i still took fourth place nice <laughs> fuck <Whatever>. them <laughs> nice abs yeah, nice abs dude i'll still Fucking Greco Roman the shit out of you. you, bro. Yeah. yeah, nice abs, fifth place. You, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you fucking chump. How did you how did you drop the weight from um from freshman year to sophomore year to wrestling? Was it just from wrestling? I think it was, man. Yeah. Because my my diet did not change. I mean, I guess we tr maybe hanging out with my wrestling buddies, we tried to change our diets, but I mean, Jesus, it's been literally like in the last you know, 10 years of my life that I've actually tried, like honed in on what diet works best right. for me now, you know, even, even in college where I played division one lacrosse, I was like still being called a fatty, you know, by, <laughs> by teammates. It was just, you know, it's, it's tough when you don't have that foundation of like, mm -hmm. you know, healthy proteins, vegetables, sure. you know, lots of water. You know, it's not okay to substitute Diet Coke instead of water. <laughs> right. You know? Um, yeah. Uh, huge, did you ever wrestle? No, no. Dude, it's fucking hard. It's the fucking hardest. I Being in shape from playing other sports, and then you'd start wrestling season, and you're like, I'm not in shape at all. Like, how is this possible? I've been I, – I literally just completed another sport, and the second – like, I would, like, get – like nervous at, at you know like months before wrestling started because i was so fucking because of how hard it was yeah i mean i i remember wanting to wrestle and then i i remember my freshman year seeing the the varsity wrestlers at my school and being like no way no. and they were the guys who were like take a bite out of a snickers and then spit the whole day and not Dude. swallow it so that they can like just lose all of the um the water weight and all that stuff, like that kind of cutting. And I was like, no way, I'm not going to do that. Like, I want to eat the Snickers. dude. I, I remember like my brother specifically telling me when he was a senior and I was a freshman, don't wrestle, dude. The wrestlers are psychos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, finally, my sophomore year, I was like, I can't lose this weight. I don't know what to do. All my friends were wrestlers. And I like gave it a shot and they were like, well, you're, you'll start as a sophomore. You'll, you'll start. But like, man, what a psychological fuck that sport yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. I bet. Oh man. There's I nothing mean, I like remember, it. Yeah. My, my first match, I lost like five to four and I didn't sleep that night. Like it messed me up so wow. bad. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, there's no team to it. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. you, it's you it's and it's you. one on one and a guy you're a sophomore. So what are you 15, 16? And yeah. you're just like, Oh, this guy whooped my ass Yeah, in exactly. front of a bunch of people today. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, and then it was like by one point. So I was like, Oh God, you know what I mean? And <laughs> it wasn't really until my senior year where I like, I feel like it's this way with acting too. Like I stopped kind of giving a shit. Uh -huh. I started like having fun mm -hmm. yeah, and not having so much mental attachment to it. And I got like, I got success with it and you know, I don't know. I don't know that, that, 
that it's, sport, man, was so mentally taxing. Yeah, anything you hold on to too tight, you know, you don't you you don't have it's not you coming through. You know, you're you're yeah. you're playing the anxiety of it instead of your skill or talent or whatever. You know, so preparation helps. Being in shape helps. The mentality mentality stuff helps, but a lot of it's just reps. You just need time to experience what it feels like to be under that level of pressure. Sure. And then once you've, once you've gotten used to that feeling and you, you realize you don't die, even though you got embarrassed or whatever it was, then you can just like, okay, now I can get out there and wrestle my best match or play my best basketball game or, you know, act this piece, whatever it is, you know, it's just that when you have all those other concerns that are completely unrelated to the sport or the art or whatever it is, that's when you get all fucked up, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, it's, yeah. I mean, and that wrestling and football, I mean, not as much lacrosse, but like I was determined once I got into high school, I loved lacrosse so much. That was the one I was like, I want to play lacrosse in college. It was a dream of mine to play division one lacrosse. So like, and you did. I, yeah. Yeah. I ended up. And where, where did lacrosse. you, where'd you go to college? I went lacrosse? to college at the Virginia military Institute. <clears throat> okay. Sounds and you, chill. Yeah. <laughs> Just a real relaxed liberal arts school yeah just like yeah big, yeah think big, about like university of vermont you know what i mean yeah, it's like pretty yeah. much big yeah. theater and yeah. poetry sleep in, noon, yeah. sleep in till noon do what you yeah. want to do you know? do whatever you want to do just Ugh. like you know <laughs> well, so what was that to... what, what was that like so i mean i was a lunatic to, from the from the get but <laughs> i had I, you know because i already was like I don't know. I think it was always that fat kid mentality. And then my brother was like homecoming King. And so I was always trying to be like road, less traveled kind of guy. And, and then like senior year was nine 11 for me. And so uh -huh. like I had decided, you know, my parents couldn't pay for school. I was going to need help somewhere. And so I was looking at uh, UMBC. Uh, I had gotten into the West point um, prep school um, and then maybe two other schools, but I went to visit VMI. I stayed a night there. It was insane. <laughs> and I was like, oh, if I do this, I'll be a certified like badass. Right. Like, this, this is crazy. It'll be talked about. I'll be a lunatic. <laughs> and, uh, and like my brother had almost gone to the Naval Academy prep school and decided okay. against it. And he ended up going to like a little private school, got into a frat, got into some trouble. And I was like, I, I, we're too similar, you know? And then like the 9-11 thing happened and I was like, great. At VMI, I don't have to commission, but I can always go into to the military. Yeah. You know, I, sure. I grew up doing Boy Scouts and karate. I had that discipline. I was like, great, this'll transfer great. And the coach was like, you will play right away. You will play immediately when you get here. Yeah, and checked so, a lot of boxes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at that time, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have some kind of steady high school girlfriend that I was going to be like, see you later, babe. Got to shave yeah. my head and do military now. <laughs> you know? So you spent uh, four years there playing lacrosse. And yep. what do you, what do you uh, major in? History with a minor in French. <laughs> pretty standard. Yeah, pretty standard. <laughs> pretty standard crazy man mentality. Did you have to do basic training and stuff there? Oh, bro. I mean, the first week you're there, dude, you sleep. You don't know how long you, you sleep because, like, they They're just kick you your, down. Yeah. They just kick your doors in. So it's hell week. I mean, just like anything else. And and their whole freshman year, you're there. I mean, have people Google it. Look, Google VMI rat line and see what it's like. <laughs> so you're called a rat. You're not allowed to say I, me, or my. You're like, this rat needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh shit! You're we called. In our, you're called in our a rat. Yeah, and then you have to scurry against the walls to get to classes and to leave barracks like a rat would. You have to follow a little duct tape line, and any what? upperclassman at any point can stop you and say, "Hey, rat, who's the you know who's the first class president?" And if you don't know it right away, they can be like, "Push, do push ups or do pull ups until you got your your next class." Holy shit! Wow. Yeah. Did you get a lot of cheese or anything or no? Uh, <laughs> Did anybody become Master Splinter by any chance? Dude, we got so much cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Wait, Christ. How did how did your diet not change 
I guess you didn't need it to either because you're just so fucking went, doing basic training and stuff. Yeah, all the basically, time I went in the basic. I was I was stacked. I had yeah. been like that whole summer leading up to my rat line. I was like, nobody's gonna fucking out physically hustle me. So the like rat line still. Yeah, dude. Bananas. Google, Google, just Google. Yeah, Google rat line BMI or. If you guys want to see something insane, Google <laughs> meet your cadre VMI. Okay. And that's the first time you walk into barracks. You've just left your parents. They shave your head. They walk you into barracks. They march you in. And then there's like these upperclassmen on like the second stoop. And they're like, rawr, 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 rawr. I don't understand anything they're saying. And then it's just like me your cadre and these like people come out of the darkness and just start screaming in your face. that sounds like a haunted house <laughs> did you get it you so eventually you do that shit did you get into it and try to scare the no the, dude yeah. i i was so against that yeah <laughs> i mean like so it didn't work on you no it didn't work on me but like if somebody was messing like so when you're a senior if somebody or even a sophomore or junior like if somebody was messing with another lacrosse player just to mess with them, just to fuck with them, like I, I would go and be like, dude, knock it the fuck off. All right. Yeah. He's a lacrosse player. He's got academics. And, you know, I, you know, I, I personally, there might have been like one or two instances ever where I got in someone's face but it would always be followed up with like, Hey man, I didn't want to look bad in front of so-and-so right. who would have sure. ratted me out for, whatever you know what i mean it was like a very rare instance but that was a very unique experience jesus christ like, i just to give you an example of this so i would leave for away lacrosse games and i would put in my earrings when i would leave like that was like okay like i can <laughs> i could be free so i like put in my earrings and then one of the parents of another lacrosse player was a graduate from VMI and told on me oh. to the officers back this, in barracks. Who's this fucking bitch? Oh, dude. I'll fucking kick I mean, the shit out of that guy. <laughs> dude, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. It's like death before dishonor and like you better not be like off the, off the you know, trail. And of course now, like, you know, I go back and I do interviews and they're like, hey, successful actor who went to VMI. But right. So I got to, I got to venture off and tell this story real quick. So I went back last year, we were <laughs> shooting gemstones and we were going to go up and see a lacrosse game. So my wife and I left, we've been shooting gemstones in, uh, late into the night. So it's like a seven hour drive from Charleston up there to Lexington. So we yeah. get in at like 10, have a late dinner. And I'm like, let's go walk around the outside of barracks. It'll be a romantic stroll. So I'm like in full like Keith mode, but like I've got my <laughs> VMI ring on uh -huh. and my wife's in like a vmi green like military jacket and i'm literally showing her the brick in the walkway that i bought as an alumni and donating to the school and these two officers like rolled up on us and were like who the fuck are you what the fuck are you doing here get off of here i'll have you arrested immediately Whoa. and like i couldn't even get like I couldn't even get a word out. Jesus. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Annie was like, Oh my God, I thought they were joking. I can't believe that happened to us. Like, and I was like, well, now you know what it's like to go to school here. Cause that's, that was every day, but I knew these guys like weren't messing around. And I was just like, yes, sir. Great. We're out of here. And then yeah. I called the superintendent the next day and said, Hey, what the fuck are they doing? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Geez. I mean, come on, you know, uh, but it, it's, yeah, it, everybody takes everything a little too wow. seriously. Wow. And so, uh, but it gives me a really cool POV now, you know? Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Of course. I mean, you're so <laughs> having gone the, through that, it's like nothing else. So then yeah. how did the POV chain? I mean, just like, so after college, after, play after going to this college after playing var i mean playing lacrosse division one yeah then what what brings you to with a history in french minor like a history <laughs> like how do you go like oh now it's do you right after that go right to la and get into yeah, the so, groundlings and everything 
the girl I was dating in high school or the girl I was dating in college, her best friend lived in LA and she was working as an extra on Boston public oh, and huge success of a show, huge success. And so we went, we flew out. You don't even have to explain I, your story anymore. Boston yeah. public. You said, <laughs> got yeah. it. Shatner dude. And yeah. so we get to LA <laughs> and we go to like a couple of these parties, meet some actors. And I'm like, Oh, they're normal people. Oh, this is like, actually a career people pursue like i had no idea but like the wheels started turning well maybe you, i could go did to you have school. the bug did you have a bug like in high school or anything of doing i had always done like the i had always done the in school classes the in school theater classes and my theater teacher always tried to get me to do an after school play yeah and my mm -hmm. football coach was like oh really you're gonna you're gonna miss the game on friday night because you got a you got a friday night show you know right god damn it cavalero not a <laughs> fucking chance oh what are you doing huh oh yeah what's your name in the show sky are you sky <laughs> oh that's cute you know uh so i mean god I damn tony's really got to miss the game because he's got to fucking <laughs> roll the perfect dice guy <laughs> masterson oh what is he gonna put on tights you're gonna put on some tights oh you put some fucking tights <laughs> look at this looks like camelot showed up huh <laughs> I actually coached uh, the football pants are actually tighter than the tights I wear. <laughs> God uh, damn it. <laughs> damn it. Oh, great job out there, though. And, and, and so anyways, like, when you grow up in Northern Virginia, I just never, sure. like, it never clicked. And I, I always had such a, you know, like, I won a theater award in middle school, but, like, it never clicked. Nobody was ever like, hey, this could be a viable career yeah. path for right. you, you know? And at that point in college, my parents were getting divorced and I was just like, I was like, is it okay if I don't go into the military and I graduate as a civilian and move out to LA? And they were both like, yeah, yeah, we don't. Yeah, sure. That sounds great. Do whatever you want. You know, they were kind of at a point, you know, where it was just like, well, we're doing what we want. So I guess right. we can't tell you, you sure. know, to not do what you want. So I was a lacrosse camp director for that summer right after I graduated from VMI. And then that September, I packed up my Nissan Altima and drove across Great the country car. to LA. Great car. Yep. Oh, dude, it lasted forever. And and the great news, guys, is I booked work like immediately. <laughs> immediately. I yeah. booked a job as a janitor at the El Portal Playhouse where I worked for <laughs> six years as a janitor. Um, I don't think that's an acting job, but uh, okay. Yeah. People talk about not work. booking work right away. I booked work right away. Right away. Right in, in North Hollywood. Yep. Right on Lancashire and Magnolia. Oh my God. That's like, that's, you know, that's part of the star tours. Yep, I got yelled at by Debbie Reynolds my first year. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, well, right. not really. Debbie Reynolds was yelling at me, but through her assistant. Oh, right. got it. Got it. So That's she was funny. like, tell him he's going to get fired if he ever does this again. Because you were because you were the janitor messing up janitor no. stuff? at No, <laughs> just because I was the person that worked at the building that she couldn't operate the elevator at. And wow. I was the nearest person by um but god rest her soul singing sure. rain was great um, yeah, it was amazing yeah yeah who, and was, then, who spoke with more uh vitriol uh her or one of the uh upperclassmen <laughs> uh ooh, th th okay this is the big thing i tell people all the time like <laughs> i will take an upperclassman telling me my shit is not shine get it locked in and then we're good i'll take that all day but what I can't stand is, oh, I love you. You're so great. I can't fucking stand that guy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like that L.A. thing, yeah. dude, of the passive aggressive, like that was something that totally blindsided me that I yeah. was like not prepared for at all. Yeah. You can do all of that training, but they, you can't deal with cattiness. I mean, the cattiness of like the or just the phoniness of it. Yeah. I mean, if you play sports and I guess to a much more uh, like realized and concentrated degree, the military, you know where you stand. I mean, it's just like, yep, this, this means this, that means that. And then I can, you know, this guy may be a dick, but I know where I stand. But with like 
out here, like it's just so nebulous. You don't know what, nothing means yeah. anything, you know? Yeah, sure. and it's same with like auditions. You could go in and be like, I killed that. And then they, you get terrible feedback. And then you go in and you're like, well, I'm quitting acting and you get the job. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. none of it makes any sense. And, yeah, and I guess the sooner your compass and all that shit, you know? Yeah, the sooner you can grab onto that, that none of it makes any sense and just do you, the better. The better you'll do, yeah. You yeah. So, we, so then, so you move to LA. You you see a bunch of things. Realize that actors are normal people, and that it's a career that you can do. And and then you just go for it. You just yeah, do it? yeah, yeah. And um, I did six months trying to get a second bachelor's degree in theater arts and dance at Cal State LA. Okay. And then I did background work that following summer, and hated my life. <laughs> And, but I met a person doing background work that was taking classes at the Groundlings and was like, you should go audition to take classes at the Groundlings. And I had no idea what that was. I was so unprepared, guys, moving to L.A. I was like, give me two years, two <laughs> years out there. If right. I can put the discipline, I put in a VMI out here just, you know, and then it was like, oh, God, I don't know what I've gotten myself into you know, and then full blown, like alcoholic addiction too, but that's a whole other podcast. But, um, I, I ended up signing up for classes at the groundlings and simultaneously signing up for classes at UCB level one for both. And, um, I didn't know there was any beef back then between UCB and groundlings. Right. I don't know if, I mean, I guess then there was right. Yeah. This is like Oh seven. Okay. And mm -hmm. I remember going in to my UCB class one day and, and saying something about taking my class at the, well, my groundlings teacher said this, you know, right. not knowing any better. And my teacher was like, Hey, Hey, hated, me. <laughs> hated my guts. The whole rest of the class was like, would you learn out of the groundlings where you wear a stupid hat and a mustache? <laughs> like, it wow. was like, oh, yeah, yeah. So needless to say, like, that, that none of that was UCB's fault. Cause I love that place. And I performed there a bunch and, I've met so yeah. many good friends there, but at that time, yeah, I actually, I, you know, I just was drawn to the character aspect of Groundlings yeah. too. Sure, like, yeah, that was that was way more my vibe. So then, I was like, okay, this is great because there is like a structure here. Mm -hmm. There was thirty people on the wall. I see, I seen them on TV and in commercials. Yeah, if I can get in one of these companies, I'll work. And so like that became like my sole focus, like same thing with like playing division one lacrosse or getting through VMI. It was like laser focused on performing on that stage. Yeah, man. And I so, mean, you're a driven dude, you know, and yeah, you're like just yeah. focused and driven to, to do it. So then you went through those classes. Yep. I went you, through those classes. I got into the Sunday company. You got into the Sunday company. My, yeah. Yep. I met my, my wife there and, and tested for SNL, and then yeah. kind of it was like, all right, I got, I got to, I got to start working. But I mean, even then, like, I, I, it all the while, fitness was very. So I got sober, and then I got super into running marathons. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got addicted to that, and I did like eleven marathons. All right. And uh, ended up tearing both meniscus in oh, one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. You're just, you know, replacing one thing for another. And then, yeah. you know, now I've, I've found my sweet spot, but um, yeah, I ended up. That's an important part of the journey though. You know, just that stuff to burn out on one thing. And then you realize, oh, I, you know, a lot of, a lot of this can be good, but I have to, you know, find the balance and exactly. And, you know, be healthy as opposed to just, you know, doing some kind of weird neurotic thing with my mind. Exactly. Or for my like, mind, oh, I should say. Yeah. 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 The only thing that's going to get all this janitor stuff out of my head is if I go run 11 miles. Right. You know, yeah. It's like, you know, yeah, you, um, so yeah. in, in nutrition, are you still just kind of eating whatever, or are you starting to think about it a little bit or kind of, um, definitely you know, starting to think more about it. Yeah. Definitely starting to think more about it. I actually, so I was a janitor and then I, I would coach lacrosse in the spring and then I kind of started getting into like, through my lacrosse coaching, some of the parents would be like, well, I want my, my kids to be as physically fit as you. So then 
I like started training some of the kids and right. then started training a parent or two. And so I had kind of this little like uh, offshoot personal training business for yeah. a few years, um, which was great, man. I worked with this wonderful family, trained both of their kids and the mom and trained them to do a marathon. And then, um, and then, yeah, like I said, you know, I tested for SNL and that was like my first real, like actual audition besides like a commercial audition. I never auditioned for like TV really before ever, maybe like a Disney co-star. Um, okay. but then like, I came back from that and had like three, like horrific pilot seasons where I was like questioning, like, what am I do? Like, what am I doing? Like, why, what is the point? Like people I, I just felt like nobody could get what, like, what type is he? Like, what is he? Right. And I, and then like one season, I just decided to grow my hair out. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was like, I tested for three things and then school of rock. And then I got school of rock. Right. Oh, right. I forgot that you had a little bit more of like a, just like a, like your length of hair. Yeah. Yeah. For years, years and years and years. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, Dude, you and, had to go so in the opposite direction of the your military experience. <laughs> Dude. I mean, it was so it was so weird to me and it was like as soon as I grew my hair out, they were like, "Oh, that's the stoner brother that lives in the basement." Or sure. "Oh, that's the rocker guy." Or "Oh, that's the that's the the loser drug dealer." Like it became all of a sudden like they could see it, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. I I mean like that's something I say all the time, the more you can just paint the picture for these creatives yeah. uh yeah you know the easier your life is going to be and um yeah and then i did school of rock for four years and um that got the axe and i didn't work for i worked one day in six months after that got canceled wow. I did that. yeah i did the dirt for for, for one oh, day nice. yeah that's right yeah 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 motley crew I, yeah that was yeah. cool yeah. And I, I went through that pilot season. I tested for one show and they went, you know, usually I'm like the outside the box choice and they went with the regular guy. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm back to ride the wave. Uh, hopefully wow. I've saved enough money. And then like out of nowhere, my wife was writing with her writing partner and she had my wife's writing partner had just auditioned for gemstones and my wife read the script and she was like, you have to go in for this show. And so it was like a push and push and push to get me in. And uh, there wasn't really any parts right for me because Adam had gotten, you know, the little brother part. And, right. And the casting director just so happened to have two little daughters and they had seen uh, School of Rock at the Pantages. And she was like, you know, that's a TV show. And they watched it. And my headshot went across her desk and she was like, oh, bring him in. I guess bring him in for like the Satanist guy. I know it's not right you know perfect for him but let's see him anyways and so like i made a big character choice and oh yeah dude wow. it's great and it's so not you it's it's cool to see you know it's this weird thing to where like you uh you you've found this kind of you becoming more and more yourself and then booking more work because of it you know it's just keep understanding what you're good at and then you get into a level now to where you can like completely depart from any of that and make this like character choice and like really lean into your training with the groundlings and all that stuff man and then it's, it's so good thing that yeah. people Thanks, are really guys. taken by on this show man it's cool i mean it's rare like you were saying like you know it's, if you can take the guessing game out of it for the for like the you know the creatives but it's you're at this stage now to where you're you know you completely went against type and you know found yeah but all that and all that training really the training, went into, yeah. i mean like you know uh if you if anybody out there is you know, got to see Tony at the groundlings. I mean, it's like obvious that he is able to switch gears like that. But also <laughs> if you watched, if you watched um, School of Rock, which I like a lot as a show too. I mean, Thanks, I was bro. just like, you know, he, yeah, you, you'd think that he kept dancing. You'd think he yeah. kept dancing. <laughs> well, it's very moves. much, I mean, that was a, School of Rock was such a version of me, just a heightened right. version yeah. of me. It was so fun, yeah. You know, and then it went to like, you know, Ozzy, which I, again, like sw swung for the fence. I've right. never done an Ozzy impression. And that was like out of nowhere. And I was like, this is what's going to break me out of the mold. And then it was like zilch that pilot yeah. season. I was like, am I ever going to work again? And now I've cut my hair into this fucking crazy mullet. What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. 
crazy. And it's, you know, it's, it's interesting to talking about this kind of like identity and identity is an interesting thing that comes up on this show a lot with people and sure. And for fitness, it's really important too, because it's a lot of it figuring out who you are, you know, we talk to people a lot about sports and it's not necessarily the most relatable thing because not everybody has a sports experience, but they'll usually, if they're listening to this show, will find it in the way of exercise. And so you go through this growth as an individual when you challenge yourself to exercise and it means it can mean different things for different people at different times in their lives, but it's, you know, and then you could start to kind of like lay it over career and then who you are in like you're with in a relationship or to your family or as a parent or whatever it is, but, but testing yourself and challenging yourself and then kind of finding out who you are it's always so beneficial. It's like, you, you know, you doing the, the marathons and kind of beating your knees up, but that was crucial to your fitness journey. You know, like the, yeah, the amount of discipline that you learn or the esteemable act of setting the goal to run a marathon, completing it, and then doing it again when it's, you know, this hard, horrible thing. And then f- somehow finding joy in that, you know, yeah. and then eventually kind of moving on from it and thinking like, oh man, all this I can get this kind of endorphin feeling uh, that I got from doing these marathons in another form of exercise that I know is much more healthful to me or, or better for my joints or, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. So it's cool to see. And then it's also neat to see that kind of start to permeate your creative and, uh, and career life too, you know, where everything totally. starts to kind of come together in like the most positive way yeah. where, you know, you're hitting success with your body and your mind. And then also you're seeing it in your career too. So what, so, t- so tell us where you are now with food and all that stuff. And what have you arrived at? You, you mentioned about 10 months ago, you started really dialing down what you were doing with food. How, how did that look for you? And, and how did that come about? Well, I think it was like, so after I tore my meniscus, maybe like four years ago, like I, I, I guess it was like four or five years ago, I was kind of like, well, I can't run. And I wasn't like, I would lift, but it was never like high intensity circuit training. And I didn't really think of that as like a cardio based thing, you know? So I was like, well, I really got to start watching my diet. So, you know, I would do crash diet things and this and that. And, and really like, I found some success with intermittent fasting. I really enjoyed doing that. And I still kind of do that. I skip still, you know, if I can hold off and eat my first meal at like 2 PM, you know, and then do my second meal at like seven or eight. I feel like I get the best results, right. but I still got to eat right, man, because I found myself intermittent fasting and like eight o'clock comes around and I'd be having like, you know, 2,500 calories because I'm like, I deserve it. Sure, you know, yeah. I'm only doing yeah. two meals and it does, it's, it doesn't work that way. So I've been also doing some calorie counting now. Like I did a, I did a little test on that noon. Oh app. yeah. How do you like that? I mean, for me, bro, you can download the app and try it. I think for 30 days for free, mm-hmm. I bought like a year thing and I did it for like three months, kind of over the fall and, and winter. Uh, and I really dug it. I mean, I ended up canceling my membership, but I can still use it for a calorie counter and like an exercise counter, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. Um, because sometimes I, I think it's, it's something crazy. It's something like 75% of us miscalculate how many calories are in certain things right? or how many calories we're intaking. And so, so were you, know, you taking in more than you thought you were taking in? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, because I would do like a protein shake and be like, you know, Oh, I could do a whole milk protein shake with, you know, four tablespoons of peanut butter and this right. and that and the other thing. And the next thing you know, I'm like, end of the day, I've got 3000 calories where my allotment's like 1800, right? You know, and it's like, I'm working out like a madman, but I'm not seeing the results I want. And and a little adjustment on that shake. Wouldn't you wouldn't feel like you were restricting yourself too much. It's literally just like a couple less, you know, a little less whole milk, a little less whole peanut butter. And like you're saving a thousand calories. Yeah, dude. And it's the same with like, I kind of got really into like keto. Like I was like, only meat and it's like that stuff has a ton of calories and if you take half of that meat and do the rest with like a side of steamed broccoli with a spritz of i can't believe it's not butter on there like you know that was the other thing i just i stopped eating green stuff so that was what was cool with that noom app 
is that like it kind of was like more green stuff more fresh fruits and veggies and mm. uh that's kind of kicked into gear which is nice so are the, you the sticking advice away on... oh sorry are you oh, sticking on... um are you sticking with any kind of like breads or carbohydrates in that way or not not really um i we do do it again i try and steer you know i try and do that 25 percent of the week we'll sure. do like a pasta or a rice dinner or something yeah. like that um luckily right now like with the quarantine and everything like we're doing like a lot of like take the chicken out of the freezer thaw it out and then we'll do like frozen peas and chicken or right. um uh there's a great barbecue spot here in town so i'll get like a lean brisket and and steamed broccoli or you know it's the normal stuff that everyone knows that they're supposed yeah. to yeah of course stick to yeah um well, would you say me, the advice the advice on the noom though just because i'm sure i think people have asked about it yeah maybe do the trial see if see what you get out of it and then but hold off on you know going for a year because you may you may get the benefit from it you know, in the 30, in one or two months, as opposed to exactly a year. like for me, it was kind of perfect because I think I started it. I was working with a mutual friend of ours, Jess Marlowe on a show in Europe. Oh yeah. Uh, miracle workers, miracle workers. And, yeah. and dude, that place was killer, killer gym. And then everywhere in Europe has a cold plunge. Oh no. yeah, I know. So it was like, oh, man. amen. But we ate out all the time. I mean, sure. I never ate in and I was there for like two months. So that was something that was great, especially with some of these like European foods that I didn't know what the calories were. Yeah. Like that kind of helped me rein it in. Um, and then we went right from that into Thanksgiving, you know, right. Yeah. And then right into Christmas right. where everybody just kind of gets lax, you know, and then it's like Fucking Thanksgiving. I'm yeah. A war zone. So yeah. it was so nice to know like how much, turkey i could have like I, I literally thanksgiving day i was like i'm gonna have my one thanksgiving meal and i'm gonna pack you know 2500 calories into that one meal <laughs> yeah you know like what can i go bananas on and like i've kind of just stuck to that since then you know yeah. i usually do i do a protein shake and usually like i do a protein shake at lunch uh like two o'clock and then i'll probably pair that with either like I don't know, a lean cut of chicken or like, I don't know. I had an, a half Italian sub today at lunch, but it was a smaller one. And so like, you know, I'll go a little lighter on the dinner that, because I had the, right. the bigger sub for lunch, you know? And then um, the, the key that's been really, uh, I feel helpful for me is drinking a gallon or more of water a day. Um, most of the time we're hungry, we're thirsty. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, hydration. It's yeah. is the key. It's a good hack. Uh, yeah, that Eugene and I are real similar in like a, like a, our fasting habits and that kind of thing too, you know, trying to cut that meal. But I'm with you on the restricted window. You know, you can go a little nuts on what you're then, once you're allowing yourself to eat, you know, and then you're like, I got to snap. I got to make up for lost time here. You don't even realize you're doing it. And yeah. I, I uh, was playing with a, a wearable, like a Fitbit wearable that had a calorie counter in it. And, and uh, I just, we always tell people to kind of re-audit their calories just to kind of check in. And so yeah. I, I'm pretty good on it just from fucking doing this show and talking about it all the time. I did it. I was surprised at how many fucking calories I was eating. Yeah. And, you know, and, and thinking like I had a pretty good handle on it and it was significantly more than what I thought. And so it was good just to kind of like, even if people do it for one day, just one day, check in, see where you're at. And you get a really good snapshot of what's happening there. And you, it'll, it'll surprise you. That percentage you threw out sounds about right. Yeah. I'd imagine it's that or more people kind of missing the mark. Yeah. Johnny, Even if you you're still, informed. Yeah. Are you still at around 1800 calories that you're allowing yourself or more? Uh, I'm probably at 2,500, but I probably through circuit workout and everything else right now, I, I'm burning about 800. So yeah, it brought balances out at about sure. 1800 yeah. to 2000 a day. Right. <clears throat> is where I'm at usually. I mean, you look great, man, and you're doing it, and your workouts are crushing. So, yeah, um, thanks, guys. Yeah, and you know, people can definitely uh, watch you do the workout on Friday. I'm, I'm, I'm be a total game for it. Uh, yeah, dude, and we'll post it, it on our, on our Instagram and stuff, uh, so that we can link to yours and they can follow you. But um, before we go, we should probably answer something from this. Um, yeah, hit me to, with a few guys. 
thing. But the, the main one is uh, just motivation being tough for people. This uh, guy, Andrew, on our live chat just said that, um, is it as simple as just taking a pre-workout? Um, it also sucks that I sleep, work, work out in the same spot since my apartment is packed and I work from home and I have roommates. So, you know, motivation, I, I mean, you know, it's a thing that everybody has to deal with, but, you know, some people are, fo uh, are can get into that focused mentality quicker. And sometimes they are able to hack, you know, their mind to get to a place. Is there anything that you guys use to kind of bring on motivation? I mean, doing a pre-workout in a way, you're, you are training your mind to go like, I'm already starting with this pre-workout. You take it, you're already in There's that mentality. There's no stopping me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've already started the pre-workout. Like if you don't work out, you're the asshole, right? Yeah, you're yeah. just going to be sitting with <laughs> pins and needles for the next yeah. half hour. <laughs> I, I have a little trick that I do Great. that I think is very useful for those people finding it hard to get motivated in the morning. So I set my alarm a half an hour before I wake up and I either have an ice water and a thermos next to the bed, and I'll drink an entire like 20 ounce water 30 minutes before I actually wake up. The first alarm will go off on my Apple Watch. I'll wake up, drink that, and then I'll go back to sleep. And when I wake up half an hour later, I'm good to go. Because you've got okay. some hydration in you, yeah. Yeah, or you can take it a next level and you can add a shot or two of espresso to that. Oh, shit. There you go. Half Wait. an hour. Set the set the alarm a half an hour before you wake up. Drink that. Try to go back to sleep. Usually I'm able to fall back asleep. But then when I wake up in a half an hour, I'm like zoomed, ready to rock. You're able to fall back asleep after a, a, a double espresso. Well, he's oh, wolfing yeah. it and then right back. Eyes closed. Exactly. Yeah. And so Ice then cold, once it hits the system. Down. It, yeah. Then it's like, yeah, he's it's like nitrous in the tank. Right. So it's like pops right up, ready to go. Yeah. 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 Usually the second shit. alarm. Yeah. <laughs> Usually the second alarm won't go off. You'll wake up like 20 minutes later, but you're right. like ready to go. Uh, that's that's cool. great. I tempted love to that. try that. I'm I'm tempted to do the the espresso thing, to be honest, because that's right up my alley. Um Cool. Uh, other than that, uh, people want to know who our favorite old school WWF wrestler was from the 80s. Ooh. Um, Cobra but, Mountain is asking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's Okay, a, go for it. Come on. His uh, he says his was Macho Man Randy Savage. I liked I liked him a lot. I did too. I was a big I was a big uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat guy though. Oh yeah, dude. Steamboat's um, amazing. Steamboat was amazing. From the worry warrior guy for life oh God. ultimate warrior yeah i was gonna say yeah. that he had the best physique at least the guy there's oh. been like two or three ultimate warriors right and that's well, what they, they say. say that dude there was a guy that slipped in there for a minute called warrior but they right. bailed on him pretty quick yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah there was the uh, the original warrior i was he a von eric was he a, one of the he is right? i i think yeah i think they snuck a von eric in there for a minute as yeah. a warrior yeah yeah I love one that Jake. The ahead, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I like Jake, Jake the snake Jake. a lot. Oh yeah. I, I love what I absolutely love is there's all of the memes and stuff now of when gyms, when gyms open up again and it's the ultimate warrior running full oh. speed to the ring. I mean that uh, talk about, uh, I mean, he was sprinting from backstage to the ring and still had the energy. I mean, talk about fucking steroids, man. I want to do that TV show so bad. That late 80s, early 90s. Oh, man. Coked out of your mind, steroided out of your mind wrestling TV show. It has so to happen, bad. right? It, it has it to, has right? To. Well, they'll never, get, they'll never get the WWE property because... They're so stingy and cheap with what they do, what they allow. And then they're also, they try to like protect their image. So yeah. you could never do like a, you know, that tells the real story. It would, it would be like, they would be involved and they would make it suck. Right? You know what you would do though? You got to change the names. You would just do, you can get the rights to the video game pro wrestling that had like Starman on it and all <laughs> of those crazy people. Yeah. Dude, and then you I just play that. And then you would just do like fictionalized versions yeah. 
of those guys. I mean, ah, there's just so much. Have you guys been watching Dark Side of the Ring on Vice? No, no I heard no, about I'll it. Watch though. it though. Guys, right? get on it. It's right. great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I of course watch Beyond the Mat and all that stuff. And that's sure. where like that kind of like where you got a real peak where you're like, holy shit, this is fucking looking dark, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Was that fucking chocolate when he finds like the chocolate on his shirt? It's um, crazy. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I got one here from, um, let's see. Uh, oh, here's about resistance bands. Sure. Let's see. Where is it? I've seen a lot of posts about resistance bands around too, but not much about suspension training. Do you guys like rings, TRX? I have gymnastics rings and I just bought an off brand TRX. So, and this is from Sophie. Yeah. Uh, do you do I haven't you? done too much yeah. personally? I mean, what, what it does is it, it, you know, like any of the suspension trainers, it, it basically helps you get into the right form for like, uh, like, uh, pistol squats and single leg squats and things like that. And so that you can do upright rows without doing full pull-ups um, and anything along those lines. So it's good for that kind of, um, you know, uh, m movement. Uh, and then you can also get like a, if you're doing kind of like a, a push up, you know, like with the, with the rings, it gives you the like, uh, a little bit more of the flexibility of going past your chest on like doing a push up on the ground where, you know, the ground's going to stop you. Right. Um, but anything past that you can do with your calisthenics. I, I think, um, you know, some of the suspension training stuff kind of uh, gives you uh, like a false sense of um, like help or guidance that you don't need that you are like depending on it when you don't need to. So yeah. if anything, Again, it's just, just like, go just Google it. Google yeah. any, any body, body, you know, any, any, you know, muscle group you're looking to work. If you just Google TRX shoulder workout, TRX sure. trap workout, whatever, I feel like you'll find it. You will yeah. find it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think to, to Sophie too, uh, Sophie, they're, they're cool. You'll have fun with them. And what they can do is they, they, they increase uh, or they add a stabilization component that you don't have if you're just going on the ground right. or using a bar. So, you know, you're kind of, if you have like a little bit of right or left arm dominance, it kind of solves that because you're not pulling on a bar where one arm can take over. you got individual, you know, hands going. And then you also get a lot of like core and shoulder stabilization. So they pull your abs in there. They pull your shoulder cores in there. And so I, yeah, both you guys, said great things like get online there's tons of shit online for trx there's oh yeah a huge Especially movement for and suspension that, trainers the the thing that people use it a lot for that has that has some great benefits is any of the core work if you google ooh, like core dude, workouts, this one yeah where yeah. you pull it down and yeah. you're leaning and you pull them down oh the whole your whole side body or you're putting gets... you're putting your feet in it so it's like similar to having an ab roller but you're just putting your feet in and you're getting that pike position like forget it It'll yeah, and then it. you could put it like in your doorway, and like if you've got somebody delivering a pizza or something, <laughs> you just like hold yourself up and then put like your feet out and have them set the pizza box on your feet. Sure. Yeah. So then they're, yeah, they're getting, yeah, they're having a little fun with that. They're seeing yeah, that. Pizza You're getting your pizza. Good for the pizza. You're getting box, an ab yeah. workout. I do a squat. I do a squat hold, and I tell them to put it on top of my butt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got one of them. You got one of them shelf butts. Yeah, dude. Well, dope, That's my dude. Book. Um, shelf butt. Shelf butt, baby. Tony um, C, shelf butt. Hey, um, so check out Tony's workout on Friday. Also, you can follow him on social media and stuff. Um, and do you uh, plug your social media and anything you want to plug that's coming out or that you're working on? Oh, yeah, guys. Check it out at Tony Cavallaro everywhere. And then my wife and I do a podcast called At Slop the Podcast. You can... <laughs> Check it out on Instagram and then our uh, our um, our webpage is slopthepodcast.com. It's a play on Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop podcast. Love it. <laughs> yeah. So that one's really fun. And then um, stay tuned for uh, Gemstones at some point, hopefully yeah. more what, soon. Did you shoot some of season two? Two days. Two days. Wow. Holy shit. And that's why, are you stuck there now or do you guys just choose to stay there? Yeah, we're kind of on, In you know. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hate, dude. Yeah. But I mean, it's not a bad place. So. No, yeah. no, not at all. Yeah. 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 
Fucking hey, dude. I, oh, we're, man, we're well, everybody's pumped to see that second season. So, yeah, man. And it's yeah. been great having you. So, um, so awesome. Uh, so check dude, him you, out. Thanks for doing it. You got to come back and do the show again, and we'll do it where we're we can all get together and see each other live. Yeah. And also, person. maybe during this, still, we can uh figure out a time where we can all do a workout, and that'll be fun to to do on yeah, Instagram dude. or something, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can each show each other something on this. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, Ooh, we'll pick like a muscle group and we each come in with like a hit yeah. a hit thing for like Let's a 30 second. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. I'm down. Um, cool. Uh, so follow Tony on all of this stuff. If you want to follow us, it's at the dumbbells uh, across all social media. If you want to email us, you can email us at ask the dumbbells at gmail.com. And on behalf of myself and Eugene Cordero, the dumbbells and our wonderful guest today, Tony Cavallaro, Tony yeah. C. We like to remind everybody that's out there listening to train dirty Eat clean. And live in between. Yeah, baby. Yeah, babe. Thanks for joining us, bud.